Hello friends, this video on force and pressure part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have spoken quite a bit about force, let us see how do we measure force. Now why do we talk about measurement? Now have you ever observed that when you go to a grocery shop, maybe to buy rice or to buy vegetables or to buy fruits, what do you tell him? Say, let's say you want to buy potato. So, do you tell him that, okay, give me 10 potatoes? You talk in terms of a unit which is used to measure mass. So, you say I need 10 kg of potato or I need 1 kg of potato. So, kg or kilogram is a unit to measure mass. Similarly, when you talk about liquids, whether it is water or milk, you do not talk in terms of kg. You talk in terms of liters like 5 liters of water, 10 liters of milk. So you talk about any liquid, you talk in terms of liters. So this unit measures the volume. Similarly, when you talk about length, for example, you talk about your height. How, what is your height? Do you say that my height is one liter? No, because liter is a unit of volume. But now when you are talking about height, you are talking about length. So for this, you use units like meters or centimeters. You talk about temperature, so then you talk about Celsius or Fahrenheit. So these are the units to measure temperature. So every physical quantity has a unit for its measurement. So does force. So force also has a unit and the SI unit of force is Newton. So Newton is, yes, it is named after the famous scientist Newton who gave the various laws of motion which you will study in your higher classes. And it, in short, it is written by as capital N. So whenever you talk about force, it is in terms of Newton. For example, here, this person is pushing this box in this direction. So he is applying a force. So let us suppose if I say that, okay, how much force is this person applying? So if I say that he is applying a force of five Newton. So if I do not mention Newton, so then the information is incomplete. Five what? So five Newton. So Newton is the unit which is used to measure force. So now let us look at some random examples to get a better idea or a better recap of whatever we have discussed so far. So in the first scenario, I assume a case where a box is being pushed by two people on the in the same direction. So here, what do you see? The force which is applied by this first person. Let us say the force which he applies is F1 and the force which is applied by the second person is F2. And let us say that F1 is... 10 newtons. So 10 newton is the magnitude of force applied by the first person and the force is applied in this direction. And F2 is the force applied by the second person. Let us say he applies a force of 20 newtons and this force is also applied in the same direction. So what would be the net force on the box? So the net force on the box let us denote that by F will be equal to F1 plus F2 because we have learned that forces which are applied in the same direction, they get added up. So F1 will get added up to F2. So this becomes 10 plus 20 which is equal to 30 Newtons. So a total of 30 Newton of force is acting on this box and the net force is acting in this direction and therefore the box will tend to move in this direction. Now let us look at another example. So in this example, you see that this person applies a force of F1. This person is applying a force of F2, but both of them are applying the force in opposite direction. So in this case also, let us say F1 is 10 Newton. F2, that is the magnitude of F2 is 20 Newtons. But in this case, F1 is applied in this direction and F2 is applied in this direction. So what would be the net force? So the net force would be the difference between the two. That is F1 minus F2. So this will be equal to minus 10 Newtons. So what does it show? Minus sign. Now when it was plus, plus sign denotes anything in this direction. So when you say minus sign, that means the net force is acting in this direction. So the boy, so this box will move in this direction because greater force is being applied from this direction. F2 is greater than F1. So obviously F2 will dominate over F1 and the box will move in the direction of F2. 
so i hope the concept of force is clear now what is force force uh, can be a push a pull a, a lifting of object carrying an object any kind of action which can cause a change in state of motion now when i say change in state of motion it can make a stationary object move it can stop a moving body it can slow down a fast moving body or it can fasten the speed of a slow moving body it can also change the direction of motion so these are the various ways by which force can change the state of motion now when we talk about forces in same direction and opposite direction uh, a very important concept comes into picture and that is balanced and unbalanced forces so let us see what are they balanced forces so these are equal and opposite forces that means if forces are acting on the same object in opposite direction and both the forces are equal in magnitude in that case what will happen there will be no change in motion so let us take an example let us take the example of tug of war now this team this is team a and this is team b now team a is trying to pull the rope in this direction team b is trying to pull the rope in this direction so they they both are applying forces in opposite directions so let us suppose this is f1 and this is f2 now if f1 is equal to f2 if f1 is equal to f2 then what will happen because in, on this side also they are pushing this side also they are pushing and i mean both of them are pulling it you know, with the same magnitude so if this side it, it is let us say if it is 10 newtons this side it is also 10 newtons so if equal forces are acting in the opposite direction what will happen which side the rope will move the rope will not move in any direction so it will remain at the same position so there will be no change in motion so if f1 is equal to f2 then there is no change in motion so when equal and opposite forces act on a body then a stationary body remains stationary a moving body keeps on moving so there will be no change in the motion of that body so these type of forces are called balanced forces so from this we also get to know that it is not always necessary that only if there is a change in motion the object is moving so it is also possible that there is no change in the state of motion but still force is being applied because in this case what is happening force is app being applied team a is also applying a force team b is also applying a force but there is no change in motion correct but force is being applied so it is not necessary that any time force is being applied there has to be a change in motion there will be either change in motion or there will be a change in shape so we will talk about change in shape a little later so this is the concept of balanced forces whereas when we talk about unbalanced forces so here unequal forces will be acting in same direction or opposite direction so they are unbalanced forces so let us look at this example so here there will be a change in motion so let us consider the same example so now here this is again team a this is again team b they are trying to pull it in this direction with say force f1 they are trying to pull it in this direction with force f2 but here in this case f1 is not equal to f2 so either of them is more so if f1 is more then the rope will tend to move in the direction of f1 if f2 is more then the rope will move in the direction of f2 so in this case as you can see if these people are giving a greater force that means if f2 is greater in that case the entire rope will move towards this direction so in case of unequal forces there is a change in motion that is a stationary object might move a moving object might come to rest so there could be some or the other change in the state of motion so these are unbalanced forces so now you understand when we talk about balanced forces that means it is balanced from both the sides like if you think of uh, the the weighing balance or the spring balance you have two weights on both direction on both sides so if you have a heavier weight on one and a lighter weight on the other so this will come down and the other one will go up 
right but if you have exactly equal weights on both sides then both will remain at the same position so they will be in the balanced state so that is exactly what is happening here here since equal forces are being applied here so they are applying a force of f1 they are applying a force of f2 and in this case f1 is equal to f2 so this is a scenario of balanced forces but in case of unbalanced forces that is not the case so here what is happening is they are applying a force of F1, they are applying a force of F2 and in this case F2 is greater than F1. So they are not equal. So this is an example of unbalanced force. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.